Yo, what's going on guys? It's Seabrev. Welcome to another MLB The Show 22 video. The All-Star Game program is finally here, and I don't know about you guys, but this is one of my favorite points in the game cycle. I think the All-Star Game content is always so much fun. We've got 30 new All-Star Game cards in this program, one for each team, and in this video, I'm going to be going through each and every one of them, breaking them down, and giving my opinions on the card. I will also be telling you who I think you should take out of the choice pack, and I'll also be rating each card individually in a tier list format, so S, A, B, and C tier. These tiers will be relative to the other 30 cards in the program and not necessarily relative to other cards in the game. And just to break down how the program works, very quickly, there's 30 of these cards. They're all sellable and purchasable on the marketplace and you can get 18 of them by grinding through the program so you get three from each division the first card that you get is at 100,000 xp and the last card that you get is at 400,000 xp and the program does last three weeks and a day there is also a new collection for a 99 jackie robinson which is essentially going to require you to get all 30 of these all-star game cards here's the jackie robinson card looks completely insane uh, one of the best cards in the game for sure. Uh, but just keep in mind, if you want to do this collection, you're probably going to need all 30 of these cards anyway. So the part where I go over who you should take out of the pack is a little bit less relevant since you're going to need all of them. But at the very least, it'll help you decide who to take first and who to prioritize so that it improves your team the most. With that being said, let's dive into the first division, which is the NL West. And in my opinion, this is the weakest division by quite a bit. First off, we got Joe Mantiply, who is an okay card. Um, the main draw this card actually is he's got maxed out walks per nine and also has 99 control and 97 control on a sinker and circle change respectively and also has 99 break on both so this card is going to be a sinker a circle change spammer i don't know if he's a top four lefty currently i'll have to use him first but he does kind of fit a little bit of a more niche finesse lefty which could be good considering Aaron loop has gotten torched in the recent roster updates he's all the way down to a 72 overall so this guy could slide in definitely a worse pitch mix than loop uh, but everything else is much better across the board obviously uh, i have this card rated in b tier could be pushing a tier remains to be seen next is cj crone who looks pretty good on paper uh, the main thing I like about CJ Crone and this was also true of his card that was released on launch is that he's got both dead red and breaking ball hitter and these are some things I'm gonna be talking about with a lot of these cards these cards have active quirks the best one you can have in my opinion is dead red and the second best one you can have is breaking ball hitter so cards that have both play way above their attributes CJ Crone does in fact have both and we'll see that with a couple more cards along down the line. Uh, problem with CJ Crone is that he plays first base, which is a very hotly contested position. A lot, a lot of good cards that you could be using as your first baseman right now. I don't know if he's up to their standard, uh, but I will say I do think his cards typically play pretty well. I liked his face of the franchise card, like I said, on launch day. Uh, the splits are really good. I like the higher contact versus right and the higher power versus left. Uh, as we talk about with Machado when we get there, I really think those types of splits are good for where we're at. Uh, pitching wise, because you're going to see more righties a bit more as you know the pitchers from this content drop are getting used more. Uh, so the contact versus right definitely helps. All that's to say, I don't think Crone's making anyone's god squad, but if you're new to the game or you're just coming back from a long break, this could be an easy card just to slide into first base. He's going to hit extremely well. A great card to use in the meantime if you're working your way up to some of the more top-end first basemen that are available in the game right now. I have CJ Crone rated in B tier. Next is Tony Gonsolin, who in my opinion is one of the worst cards in the release. Uh, a lot of his value comes from his hits per nine, which isn't terribly relevant for for a lot of the player base, uh, if you play most of your games on All-Star, this is about one of the worst pitchers you could use, I think. His pitch mix just is not good enough. Um, you know, four seam splitter slider, 12-6, nothing moves arm side, uh, and nothing moves glove slide except for the slider. So uh, I just don't think this card's very good, to be honest. I don't see people having a ton of success with him. He also doesn't even have a ton of velocity throwing his four seam at 94. So just not a lot you can do with this card, unfortunately. I have Tony Gonsolin rated in C tier. Next is Manny Machado, who I think is the best card in the NL West division by quite a bit. As I mentioned with CJ Crone, I love the splits of the really high contact versus right and the really high power versus left. Uh, this is a card that can hold his own against righties while still protecting your lefties in your lineup by having maxed out power versus left. Uh, obviously comes stock with diamond defense at every position that he plays as well, which is super nice. 
Uh, again, though, third base, first base, very hotly contested positions where there's a lot of really good cards people are trying to fit into their lineup. So when I'm looking at this card, I'm really looking at him at shortstop. Uh, and with the 45 speed, he's going to be a bit sketchy on defense. He does obviously come with the diamond shield there, and 97 arm, 97 reaction will help him quite a bit. But on slow rollers and balls up the middle, uh, I think he might struggle a little bit defensively, but other than that, uh, really, really solid card all around. I don't even think 76 power is that low. It just kind of looks like it is compared to the other graphs on the card. I have Manny Machado rated in very high A tier, a borderline S tier. And finally, in this division, we have Carlos Rodon, who, again, the pitch mix leaves a bit to be desired. It's much better than Gonsolin's, though. He throws his four-seamer a lot faster, and the speed differentials between his off-speed is a lot better. So this card could be pretty decent. Uh, again, just not a very meta pitch mix, not something you're typically looking for. One of the better versions of a card like this, I think he's quite a bit better than Gonsolin, and I have him rated in B tier. So as for who you should take out of this choice pack, I think the clear best card is Manny Machado. I will be taking him first. You could also take Joe Mantiply for the bullpen if you're looking for a new lefty. Uh, otherwise, I don't really think any of these cards are going to crack your lineup or rotation, so you could definitely sell uh, if you're not planning on doing the collection. Uh, so you could just take Manny and sell the other two, use the stubs to buy cards from other divisions, which are much more powerful. Uh, but yeah, Manny is the only one that really excites me here, and I'll give Mantiply a shot. I uh, can't really say how good he is because we've never had a diamond version of him, so it remains to be seen. On to the next division now, which is the NL Central, and starting it off with Wilson Contreras, who looks incredible on paper, absolutely destroys left-handed pitching, gold defense, 93 arms, 65 speed, and also has catcher pop time, which means he's going to be able to throw out base stealers a lot more effectively. No active hitting quirks, which is a bit of a bummer. I do think this card is probably a top five catcher in the game right now, and I love his splits because even though 90-82 versus right leaves a bit to be desired, uh, using a card like this really helps protect those power lefties that people are trying to use. So this is a concept I'll talk about later with Julio Rodriguez as well. Uh, but in a vacuum, this card doesn't look great because of his attributes versus righties, but when you look at your lineups on the whole, people are really trying to fit in a lot of power lefties in the corner. So you're talking about Devers, Brett, Ruth, Jordan Alvarez. Uh, even with this release, you've got Harper and Soto. Uh, Cedric Mullins just came out. And you can't have a lineup entirely full of lefties, right? Because you're just going to get torched by the Randys and Valenzuelas of the world. Uh, so these cards are important, even though individually they don't look amazing. Uh, when you put them in the context of lineup construction, these cards become much more valuable. And I think Wilson Contreras is definitely up there. Again, we'll talk about Julio Rodriguez, who's in the same category. Uh, but these cards are important. I would not platoon this guy with Joe Maurer. Uh, I know a lot of people have been talking about that. I typically don't like platooning. Uh, too much when we get this far into the game cycle. I don't think, you know, there's enough of a weakness on the cards to warrant it. You know, 80, 90 82 is not that weak, in my opinion. Uh, and I definitely don't want to burn my backup catcher just for a platoon, but just my opinion. Uh, anyway, I do think Wilson Contreras is a top five catcher. Uh, I think Alejandro Kirk, who we'll talk about later, is also pushing top five. However, in my opinion, I still think they're a step below the top tier catchers that we had before this content drop. So I do think both Contreras and Kirk are uh, a step down from Piazza Maurer and Napoli. And so I probably won't be starting either catcher, but all that's to say this card is extremely good. And I also have him in high A tier and borderline S tier. Next is Luis Castillo, who I think is maybe one of the more slept on cards in the release. This guy is basically a baby Sandy Alcantara. Their pitch mix is almost identical, uh, aside from the fact that Castillo does not throw a curveball and Sandy does. Um, but yeah, primary circle change, same pitch mix. Castillo also has outlier two on the sinker, so he's going to be able to throw uh, the sinker at 98, 99 consistently. So this is a card where really it allows you to run two Sandy Alcantara's essentially. Um, so super good card. I've always loved Luis Castillo cards. I think his pitch mix combined with his delivery makes his circle change up seem like it has a ton of movement. Um, really a big fan of this card. I have him rated in A tier. Next is Corbin Burns. What is there to say about Corbin Burns? This guy's cards are always so good. He does have outlier two on the sinker, of course. That's one of the signature things that makes Corbin Burns good. 
uh, it allows his sinker and cutter to have a lot of speed differential even though it doesn't look like it uh, from the pitch velocity graph there with the outlier his sinker is going to be at 98 99 and the cutter is going to sit 95 so that dynamic alone makes this card super strong along with the three off speed pitches being very good curveball slider circle change uh, not much to say people have been using live series corbin even still up until you know this content drop and this is just a step up across the board so i have this card rated in s tier next is david bedner closing pitcher for the pittsburgh pirates i don't see this card getting a lot of play he does have 97 control and 95 break on his splitter uh, so you can kind of use him in sort of a Bruce Suter way, but a lot of people don't run Bruce Suter anyway. Again, a lot of his value comes in his per nine, so those of you playing on All-Star, this is just not a good card in general. This is unfortunately uh, one of the cards that just doesn't translate well in-game. A pitch mix of four-seam curveball splitter is obviously nasty in real life, which is why David Bedner is having so much success but in game, it's just not good enough. I have this card rated in C tier. Finally, in the Annal Central, we have Paul Goldschmidt. Look at those stats for his left. He's so good. He also does have dead red. Uh, very much worth mentioning. I do think this card is pretty similar to CJ Crone, much worse versus righties than Crone was, but uh, way higher contact versus left. This is again another budget first baseman that you can kind of slide in if you don't have one of the top tier guys. Uh, but overall, I think he's pretty on par with you know, the average power level of a card of where we're at. Uh, I do have him rated in B tier. As for who you should take from the choice pack in the NL Central, I think the choice is pretty clear. I think Burns, Castillo, and Contreras are the best three cards by quite a bit. Uh, I'll be taking Corbin Burns first, and then I'll be looking at either Contreras or Castillo. Probably Castillo, since I'm pretty comfortable with Napoli as my catcher at the moment. Um, but, you know, Wilson very good as well, may, may find some play on my bench. I think if you're not interested in the collection and you're looking to sell and you're really only interested in the cards that make your team over the top right now, I think Burns is maybe the only one. Uh, again, depends on your catcher situation. Uh, Contreras definitely has potential to be your starting catcher, depending on what you like and how you structure things. Next is the NL East, which is the most exciting division, the most stacked division by far. And it starts off with Dansby Swanson, who is the most surprising card in this entire release. When I heard him announced as the name, I don't know really what I was expecting, but this card blew me away. This is probably the best shortstop in the entire game. Uh, this card comes with diamond defense stock, 83 speed, uh, parallel four gets him diamond defense at his secondaries too if you're interested in that, and then just amazing contact, great power, balanced hitter, and also has two-handed slap swing which a lot of people are a huge fan of. So. This card absolutely blew me away, like I said. This is easily an S-tier card and potentially the best shortstop in the game right now. And from one S-tier card to another, we have Sandy Alcantara, who is probably the best pitcher in this content release, easily a top five pitcher in the game for me right now. This card is so good, so well balanced across the board. I love that he has a primary changeup that's gonna help your control on that pitch so much. Again, outlier two. Uh, brings the sinker up to 99, 98. Uh, also throws the slider at 90, which is a super hard slider. You guys know I love hard sliders. And the curveball is also thrown really hard as well at 84. So his off-speed pitches are amazing. Obviously has the potential to throw 100. Uh, 111 hits per nine is great. You can take a look at his control there and his break stats. Uh, 97 break on the sinker and 92 on the circle change. Uh, you're going to be tunneling for days with that dynamic. And on top of that, you got a th really hard slider and a really hard curveball to go along with it. Uh, this card is just so, so good, man. Uh, gonna be a meta pitcher for a very long time. You're gonna be taking a lot of hacks against this card over the next couple months, like I said, easily S tier. Next is Edwin Diaz, who unfortunately only has basically two pitches. He also does not have outlier on either of his fastballs, so that's a bit of a bummer. Uh, this is unfortunately just another case of great pitch mix in real life, not so great in game. Uh, there's only so much you can do with two pitches. If this card had a changeup, he would be on a whole nother level. But as it stands right now, I don't think this card is too terribly useful. I do have him rated in B tier just because the primary slider and the high hits per nine K per nine, but uh, definitely could be C tier. You're just not going to be able to fool a lot of hitters with a card like this in the game. Next is Bryce Harper, a little bit of a budget Jordan Alvarez, but with much better defense and speed. I do love that he has 100 contact versus left. It does make me lean a little bit more towards Harper than Soto, as we'll go over Soto after this. Uh, I just like my lefties to be able to hit lefties a little bit just in case 
I run into Randy, but Harper cards always play amazing. Dead Red, of course, um, the best quirk you can have. And 110 106 is no joke versus righties. This is an incredibly good outfielder card. I have them high A tier, low S tier. Um, very, very good Harper card. It's always play amazing. Yet another left handed bat you could potentially add to your lineup. And uh, 80 fielding, 71 speed at parallel two. So gold defense there, uh, very easily obtainable. Really, really like this card a lot. And finally, we have Juan Soto, who obviously what jumps off the page is the 77 contact versus right. Again, if you play an all-star most of your games, that 77 contact is not gonna be too terribly big of an issue. Uh, 98, 114 versus righties is obviously great. Active quirks include dead red. So pretty similar to Harper, uh, just more power versus right and less contact versus left, essentially more power versus left for Soto as well. Once again, I have him around the same rating as Harper, you know, high A tier, low S tier. This is an extremely good left-handed bat. Yet another one. It's so hard to fit in all of these, but a very, very good card. As for who you should take out of the choice pack, I think Sandy is the clear choice since you need five starting pitchers anyway, so I'll be taking him first. I personally am also going to be starting Dansby Swanson at shortstop moving forward, so he's my second pick. And then I think your third pick should either be Harper or Soto, whichever one you personally prefer. I think I'm going to go Harper. I think he's a little bit more balanced across the board, but Soto is great as well. On to the American League now, and starting with the AL West, which actually has four starting pitchers out of their five cards, which is kind of interesting. First off is Justin Verlander, who I think is probably a bit better than people are giving him credit for. Um, obviously, we had the Verlander last year that was disgusting. The reasons Verlander was so good last year are not present on this card. Uh, Verlander last year had an outlier on the fastball and a cutter to go along with it, and that dynamic alone was nasty. Um, so this card is not the same as Verlander's card last year. I will get that out of the way right away. Uh, I don't think he is a top, top tier pitcher, but I think this card is good. Uh, I think his speed differentials are really good, and if you take a look at his control and break, they're really, really strong, actually. Max control on the four seam and slider, and also max break on the slider, and almost max break on the changeup. Uh, through my experience pitching with Verlander last year, even when he had outlier four seam and cutter, uh, his best pitch most of the time for me was his circle change up. So uh, I think this card's a bit better than people are leading on, especially with 109 hits per nine. That is incredibly viable at this point in the year. Really good, actually. Uh, I think this card is really solid. I have him rated in A tier. And now we're on to Shohei, who is probably the most disappointing card in this entire content release. His hits per nine, K per nine are just not on par with any of the other starting pitcher cards that we've seen, even in this individual content release. So that is definitely a bit of a bummer. They also modified his velocity on all of his off-speed pitches earlier in the year, which in my opinion made the card uh, quite a bit worse. I definitely miss the days of the really slow cutter and the much slower slider as well. Uh, so overall, this card isn't really even much better than his live series card. You can take a look at his hitting stats and that's really the main knock is his live series is at 94. So if that card's playing up on inside edge, there's really no reason to use this card. Um, obviously though, his live series is pretty expensive. So if you're somebody that hasn't used the live series or you don't have Randy Johnson, uh, this is going to be, as we move throughout the program, a very accessible Shohei Otani card. This card should be pretty cheap. Um, you know, as we move farther and farther throughout the program. So other than that, though, if you have live series Shohei, you probably just use that instead and pretty disappointed with this card overall. Uh, I have him rated in B tier. Next is Paul Blackburn. And as an A's fan, I can say this. This guy got a card because the A's had to send somebody. Uh, this card is as mid as it gets. You know, usually sinker cut or circle change is pretty good, but the speed differentials aren't great and he doesn't throw too hard. Uh, I don't think this card is very good and I don't think he'll see much play. I do have him rated in C tier. Rounding out the starting pitchers in this division, we have Martin Perez, who is just a strictly better version of Paul Blackburn across the board. This card also is left-handed. Uh, interesting to note about Perez is that his control and break on his sinker and cutter specifically are super strong. You can take a look, 96 break on the sinker, 96 control on the sinker, 97 control on the cutter, and then you go to break, it's 92, 97 for those pitches, and also 92 on the circle changeup. So 
Uh, lots of sinker cutter circle change from this card, which is as meta as it gets. A lot of good tunneling you can do with this guy. He got a player of the month card earlier in the year, which did okay. So overall, I think this card is just good. I don't know how much play he'll see, but you know, definitely not a bad card by any means. I haven't rated high B tier, low A tier. Finally, rounding out the AL West, I have one of the cards I am most excited to use, Julio Rodriguez. It's so cool to see guys like this be hyped, come up through the MLB and just be destroying everything like he has been in real life. Uh, really, really fun. And I think I'm going to spend the most amount of time talking about this card out of any cards in the release. So here we go. Um, I've seen a lot of disappointment on social media and from others about this card because of his stats versus righties. And that is absolutely valid. Um, throughout MLB The Show's history, the most important hitting stats for cards has been contact and power versus right. Because in a normal meta, you face right-handed pitching a lot more than left-handed pitching. Um, this the beginning of this year has been a bit weird. We've had a ton of good lefties. It's been a lot more balanced. We should shift a bit more to a lot more right-handed pitching starting meta uh, as we get these cards that have just been released being used by everyone. You know, Burns, Alcantara, uh, Castillo, stuff like that. Uh, Nolan Ryan just came out in the chase packs as well. So individually looking at this card, a bit disappointing with the stats versus righties, but if you look at lineup construction holistically, uh, where people's lineups are at right now and the cards they're trying to use, this card actually gets a huge bump and I think is probably going to be an essential part of most people's meta lineups. So um, I personally have been running Alfonso Soriano in center field. The reason for that is I really needed a right-handed bat with good defense and speed in center field. This is because my two corner outfielders have been left-handed with semi-poor defense. I have been using, up to this point, Jordan Alvarez and Babe Ruth. Uh, in left and right field respectively. So I really needed the defense in center field to make up for the ground that the corner outfielders are not covering and allow me to use those bats as well. Um, all that's to say, this is exactly what I'm looking for and uh, what a lot of people are looking for, I think. This is, you know, imagine Byron Buxton, except he crushes lefties also. So not only at parallel one, you get diamond defense and 99 speed. Uh, not only do you get some of the best center field defense you can get in the entire game right now, but he also provides insane lineup protection for all the amazing lefties that people are trying to use. So I mentioned them earlier when I was talking about Wilson Contreras, but just off the top of my head, you've got Devers, George Brett, uh, Jordan Alvarez, Babe Ruth. In this release, you got Bryce Harper, Juan Soto, and Cedric Mullins just came out. Um, so trying to fit all those guys in your lineup is going to require you to use cards like this, which I think is why this card is so, so good. Uh, you can just sandwich him in between two power lefties, and not only are you going to have end game defense in center field, but you're going to punish people who try to bring in left-handed relievers against your lefties late in the game and ha end up having to face Julio Rodriguez with that lefty with the three batter minimum. So individually, this card is pretty good. Um, the right-handed stats definitely hurt him a little bit. Also, no active quirk should mention that. So it's, he's probably not going to play above these stats at the plate. But holistically, from a lineup construction standpoint and trying to fit in all the cards people want to use right now, this is a pretty essential part of team building. And I think one of the better options to get a right-handed pure center fielder in your lineup. So I do have this card rated in S tier. Uh, despite the attributes versus right, and he will personally be my center fielder uh, moving forward from now until I think someone better comes along. As for who you should take out of the choice pack, I think Julio's the clear number one. Even if you're not going to start him, he's an amazing bench bat. You know, he crushes lefties, and the 99 speed can't be understated uh, for a guy that's trying to turn doubles into triples and such. Uh, otherwise, really depends on how your rotation is looking and what you like to use. I personally am probably going to take Verlander just to use him for a couple games and, and see how good he is. Uh, I'll probably also try out Perez. I'm going for the collection anyway, so I'll need all these cards anyway. Uh, but I could definitely see just taking Julio and selling the other two if you don't care about the collection. I could definitely see taking Julio and Shohei if you don't have access to the other Shohei. Uh, tons of options here, but overall I think you should get uh, J-Rod at the very least. On to the AL Central now and a couple of cards that definitely surprised me. The first one is Andres Jimenez. I don't know what I was expecting from this card, but this card made my jaw drop when I first saw his attributes because I wasn't expecting him to be this good. Uh, this is Diamond Defense at second base with 92 speed. Uh, come stock, you don't have to parallel him at all for the diamond defense. And also, those stats versus righties are insane. 112 and 93 versus righties. 
Um, obviously, the lefty stats leave a bit to be desired, not necessarily as bad as they look. You know, even at parallel two, uh, it becomes 170, which is a bit cleaner numbers and a, a bit easier to see that it's not that bad. Um, but if you get this guy versus a righty, he's probably one of the best second basemen in the game. He's definitely rivaling uh, Chase Utley for me in that regard. No hitting active quirks, which is a bummer. Uh, but again, if you for some reason have a righty heavy lineup and you're really looking for a left-handed middle infielder, this has got to be one of the premier choices uh, in the game. Also gets diamond defense at his secondaries at parallel four. So was really pleasantly surprised by this card. Uh, extremely, extremely good card. I probably wouldn't platoon him. Again, not a huge fan of platooning with where we're at this year, uh, but definitely carry like a righty on the bench that can play the middle infield in case you get into a tough spot late game. You don't have to take a lefty lefty at bat with this card. And uh, Tim Anderson may be that guy to carry on the bench. Pretty similar to Manny Machado. Uh, he's about minus 10 in both power and contact compared to Machado uh, versus right. So that's a bit of a bummer. Way higher contact versus left though. Basically flip flop the contact and power there. Uh, but going to play much better defense at shortstop than Machado did. I don't think this card is going to start for me personally. I don't think he's a top, top tier option uh, in the middle infield, but I think he's pretty good. Um, no dead red, no breaking ball hitter as well. Just not enough power versus right for me personally. But again, pretty solid bench bat if you're looking for like a middle infielder bench bat. Great compliment to Andres Jimenez. I forgot to mention I have Andres Jimenez in A tier and I have Tim Anderson in B tier. Here is another card that blew me away, made my jaw drop when I first saw him. And this one especially because we got a 95 Gregory Soto for the All-Star Game program last year. So when I saw this card revealed like picture wise, when I saw that it was a Soto that was 95 overall, wasn't too excited because while the card last year was pretty good, he had some serious flaws. Um, he did have a sinker primary, but the main flaw with the card last year was his changeup. He threw a straight changeup that had horrible break. I think his break was in the 20s or 30s. That made that pitch specifically the changeup pretty much unusable. Uh, this card is much different. This card is way miles ahead better than the Soto we got last year. Frankly, I don't know how they're the same overall. <laughs> um, Almost maxed out hits per 9K per 9, that's great. Obviously outlier 2 brings the sinker up uh, to 99. So you're looking at 99 sinker and fastball, 90 slider and circle change, which is actually usable this year, which I think is going to make a huge difference on this card. Not only is it no longer a straight change up, uh, it's a circle now, which is better. Um, he also now has 72 control and 73 break on the changeup this year, which, you know, looking at other cards doesn't seem that great, but compared to the changeup he threw last year, uh, massive, massive improvement. I think this card's insane. I think he is rivaling Zach Britton as the best lefty reliever in the entire game. And I think he is a must cop for God squads. I have this card rated in S tier. Next is Andrew Benintendi, who I wish just had a little bit more power. I think if his power was pushing like 80, 85, I would have him rated a bit higher. But overall, there's just so many good lefty bats in the game people are trying to use. And this card just isn't on the same level as them. Max contact versus right is nice, but again, just wish he had a little bit more power and the defense and speed are pretty, you know, good to average. So I have this card rated in B tier. I don't know how much play he'll see. Uh, no dead red breaking ball hitter as well. And finally for this division, we have Luis Arias, who I think is probably the worst card in the entire release up, up there with Tony Gonsolin. Uh, this card is just, you know, you just can't have 81.57 versus lefties at this point in the year. I'm sorry. It's just way too low. Um, also not great speed. So if you wanted to fit him into the middle infield somehow, uh, that's going to be an issue. 125.74 versus right is fine. Uh, but there is a card even in the same division that just does the same thing but better uh, comparing Arias and Jimenez even versus lefties you know Jimenez is at 98.68 whereas Arias is at 81.57 so that's minus 18 contact and minus 11 power versus left um, just just a worse version of Jimenez pretty much across the board uh, first base primary as well which is super awkward uh, you, you want your first baseman to have power as well, and there's so many good ones. So when you look at this card, you immediately think middle infield, but then his speed isn't great. I don't know. This card's all over the place. Not a fan at all. Uh, I have him rated in C tier. As for who you should take from the choice pack, I think the first choice should be Soto for everyone. I think he is a must add to the bullpen. 
and then we're in another awkward spot where you could definitely look at selling. Do you want to use a left-handed bat in the middle infield? Jimenez could be your guy. Uh, do you want someone like Anderson? Could be your guy. Personally, I'm going Soto, then Jimenez, then Anderson. Uh, but like I said, I need all of them anyway. The only card that's really going to drastically improve your team right away, I think, is Soto. All right, on to the last division, which is the AL East, and a ton of cards that are really good in this division. The first of which is Jorge Lopez, who is easily one of the best right-handed relievers in the entire game. 120 hits per nine. Pitch mix is amazing. Outlier on the sinker, so he's going to throw at 98, 99 as well. Uh, this, this card is just so good. This is easily top three righty uh, must add to every god squad card is so so good especially if you've been running you know raleigh as your closer they're going to be a great compliment because raleigh's more of a finesse guy this is more of a power pitcher so not much to say other than add this guy to your bullpen and put him in high leverage situations he is going to perform extremely well online i have him rated in s tier next is jd martinez and this is probably going to be my most controversial take on a card throughout this entire video so Looking at these hitting stats, that's completely absurd. Um, <laughs> almost max contact versus both sides and power around the 90s. That At this point in the year, that is ridiculously good. Um, as I've talked about in previous videos and hinted at a little bit in this video, uh, I have definitely been getting away with poor defense in the corner outfield a lot more this year than usual. So. My hot take is I think you could probably argue starting J this JD Martinez card on a God Squad. Uh, Jordan Alvarez has 75 fielding and 43 speed. That is very close to this card and I've been starting Jordan. Uh, this card has a bit more upside though in that he can get gold defense at parallel 3. I think bringing him up to the gold shield is going to help a lot. Uh, this card is disgusting at the plate and just fine in the outfield for how the game plays this year. So I do have JD Martinez rated S tier for this video. And another outfielder who I also have rated S tier is Aaron Judge. Uh, I know he's been playing center field in real life. I wish he still had a right field primary because I, I want a little bit more speed from my center fielder. That's the only real knock I have on this card. Uh, obviously the contact versus left leaves a bit to be desired, but we knew that was happening with how he's been performing and how his live series card looks. Uh, for those of you who play an all-star, this card's disgusting. Uh, almost max power and 78 contact versus left is not going to bother you too much. Uh, easily an S tier card and uh, should be mentioned as I talk about every time when Aaron Judge comes up though, uh, he is super tall. So if you struggle with big strike zones, you may struggle with this card. Uh, but as you can see, dead red breaking ball hitter uh, card is insanely good. Parallel 4 will allow you to have a diamond shield. Uh, with 69 nice speed in the corner so that's probably what I'll shoot for with this card try to get him up to parallel four put him in right field or something uh, but he'll be fine in center field I just usually want my center fielders to be a bit faster anyway regardless this card's really really good I have him rated S bit of a step down here in Shane McClanahan extremely similar pretty much across the board to Carlos Rodon that we talked about in the NLS so everything I said about Rodon pretty much relevant to this card uh, so he is rated B tier and finally we have Alejandro Kirk who is another catcher I think is pushing top five for the position I think this card is very good uh, however as I mentioned with Wilson Contreras I do think he's a bit of a step down from the options we already had before this content drop which included Piazza Maurer and Napoli 117 90 versus righties is going to play really well with all the righties you're going to see from this program uh, personally I like using cards that have more than 16 speed by quite a bit I think 16 is detrimental at times especially this year when it's already hard enough to stretch a single into a double on balls hit like down the line uh, even 80 speed struggles to turn that into a double this year for some reason so uh, gonna be turning a lot of doubles into singles using a card like this not the card for me uh, but a very good card nonetheless I have him rated high A tier low S tier um, very very solid catcher uh, pushing top five for the position so for who you should take from the choice pack I did rate three cards in S tier so that makes things pretty easy obviously Jorge Lopez in my opinion should be in every single person's bullpen so that is going to be my number one pick uh, next I'll probably take JD Martinez I love this card man uh, this allows me to fit in another lefty in the outfield too if I wanted to like in center field specifically so if I wanted to use someone like the new Cedric Mullins in center field, uh, I could use a card like this in left field instead of a lefty that I've been using. So instead of running like Julio in center and Jordan in left, I could run Cedric in center and JD in left. Kind of the same thing, helps balance each other out. 
Anyway, this card is a disgusting balanced bench bat as well. So JD is my number two pickup, and then I'll be grabbing Aaron Judge after that. So that's going to do it for the video and the rankings. I hope this was helpful for you guys. I hope it helps you all make some great decisions with this program. Enjoy grinding it out. I'm excited to see what kind of content we get from the Home Run Derby. Going to be an amazing three weeks while this program is live. I am excited to play. Thanks for watching all the way to the end. Take care, friends, and I'll see you in the next video.